Great. I'm back, everybody. We're back. <laughs> so, yeah, my name is Gabriel Quinn. Welcome to the stream. I am a character designer, concept artist, uh, world builder, all that fun stuff. And uh, we're back live on YouTube again today. And today we're talking about designing with motifs because uh, I've talked about world building a lot, talked about character design and, you know, like a lot of those two things go hand in hand. So understanding what a motif is, where to incorporate it into your work, all that stuff. We're going to be covering that a little bit today. Um, not like to death, but enough. So, yeah. I have this design here, which uh, I worked on last night. It was a ton of fun. Just like a fun, just like a fun thing for me. <laughs> so, I have, I've had this idea in my head for like a little bit. And I wanted to bring it into reality. I wanted to bring it into just kind of the art space. So out of my mind onto the page and it was kind of triggered by a design I did uh, in one of the challenges I host on the Patreon discord. So let's bring that up too, actually. Oh, sick. We got people in the chat. HD's here. Solid Santiago's here. Sweet. Oh yeah. I have to post that. I'm that. I'm live. <laughs> gotta let the, uh, gotta let the people know that I'm live. Let's do copy link. Yeah, had an absolute blast um, designing this other character. Let me pull it up while I do all that link stuff. Um, so about three times a week now, we do character designs in one hour as a challenge. And uh, this was the, f the design I came up with in an hour for the challenge that was, I think just a couple days ago, or was it yesterday? What, what day is it? Tuesday? No, it was Sunday. It was Sunday we did this challenge. We do it Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, so, yeah. All right, let me just do... Cool. Thanks for bearing with, guys. But, yeah, um... Someone asked if this was part of Fish World. It could be. It's fish adjacent. Um, it definitely is fish adjacent HG. That's for heckin' sure. But yeah, this was a fun design I did. So I wanted the the words for this challenge, because we use random words for our design challenge, was I think nimble cattle. So I had this idea where I was like, okay, well, well, let me take you through the thought process, because there was there was a thought process. I wrote some notes. So in the thought process, I was thinking to myself, I was like, okay, like nimble cattle, what does that mean? Uh, well, cattle are kept. So that's kind of part of the deal, right? Is they're domestic creatures. Why would the cattle be nimble? Maybe because they wanted to escape, maybe for terrain purposes because of predators. I don't know. Um, but this was a character design challenge. So I'm like, all right, you know, do I do like a, a creature as a character? I don't know. I mean, I could, but I don't know. And then I thought a nimble cattle keeper, herder, maybe? So I decided to look at what those possibilities could be. Like maybe they need to be nimble because of the nature of the cattle or the nature of the world, you name it, you know, whatever it is. But um, yeah, let's see. So then I kind of scribbled out this quick idea where I was like, what if there are these giant beasts, like a mixture between like a bison and a mammoth or something, just like a huge thing. And the little guy, which I scribbled in here, <laughs> the little stick figure guy, which when you're coming up with ideas, it doesn't matter. It's just an idea. But um, yeah, I wanted him to be really fun. So I just kind of was like, oh, what if he has like a big fan or something that kind of has this sort of like big like boomf and maybe that distracts or lures or something. And I was like, okay, well, he's got to be nimble though. So hmm, I don't know. I don't know. Like maybe these creatures only really respond in like maybe a fearful way. So I sketched out these ideas where basically I first sketched out this little scribble. So I turned the random drawing I did here. I took this drawing and I modified it a little bit to convey an idea I had where I was like, well, what if, what if they're using like a symbol of their predator to herd them? And I was thinking like, oh my gosh, what if it was like a cool like fan kite thing where they have it on their staff and they unfurl it and they run and it looks like a snake coiling in it. You know, it freaks them all out and they're like, oh, better better stay put or better better uh, go in our little circle or run away because maybe their predator is like a giant red snake. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Um, 
But yeah. Oh, snap. We got everybody. We got Calvin in the chat. Colin's here. Jake's here. Nabs is here. Awesome. We got Manipold here. What up? So yeah, this was kind of the idea there. Um, and so I was thinking like, well, how does it unfurl? It could all kind of be neatly in this little coiled thing here. Because I'm thinking like how this actually unfold. And when that stuff happens, I get pretty excited. You know, I really should learn 3D so I can do all the mechanical stuff. But, you know, whatever. So like this bit hinge here this drops down essentially so what would happen in this design is uh this would kind of drop down sort of shoop, on this hinge so the axis would kind of go down uh just like it shows here and then there would be like kind of multiple slats that would come down and make the face of the snake which would kind of be like in a little fold here so this would be like the head is encased here and then the rest would just kind of flow out which is like so cool to me i like it um and then for the final kind of quick setup, because we only had an hour to do this, I was like, ooh, okay, better just scramble this together. So I did a, the kind of just the character, the herder. They're like happy, you know, they're a joyful person. They're kind of nimble. They take care of the bovine creatures. The bovine creatures are pretty, you know, dead behind the, they, not really a lot going on behind the eyes. And uh, I did a very cheap drawing. I say cheap because it took no time. Like, if you need to get a concept down, like, you got to spend the budget of time wisely. So I just kind of cheaply put down the same character in a very, you know, generic pose. But holding up this staff, which is the kind of key point of the character, right? So we have the character. We don't really need to do it again in the same quality. Um, but I thought it was a lot of fun. And what that awakened in me is this idea of, like, damn, like, kites, paper, flowing, all that stuff. Like, hmm, like, maybe there's something to this. And I remembered in my mind this idea I had like a while ago where I was like, well, what if there was, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the 2000, I want to say 2003 Star Wars Clone Wars directed by Gendy Tartakovsky, but there is this one section of it where the, this kid is like running along the plains and this is in the Star Wars world and he's running, 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 running. He's like a, he's like a guy. Um, and he shows up and he gazes upon this giant battlefield and like Mace Windu is fighting a bunch of, you know, robots as they do. Sorry, droids, my bad. And, uh, it was just the coolest thing ever. It was so cool to me. So in kind of like unity with that, I was like this idea of this kid, like running along the horizon, like how would that be interesting? And I had this idea for like, I don't know if you guys know those kites, they're kites where it's like uh, they're just kind of rings, like all connected, and it like flies up in the air, like it 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 still flies even though it's like a bunch of cool rings. Um, so I thought that was really cool, and I was like, what if that was attached to the back of him, like, like they would flow behind him, and that was some kind of like markation or some kind of distinction, like it was important. Um, like, like uh, maybe no one could hurt him because he was a messenger or he held some kind of special status in the land or something because he was delivering a message or whatever. So with that in mind, I just quickly sketched out an idea. So the idea I sketched out was essentially, I was, well, first of all, I was um, designing a new pencil brush for my own purposes because I feel like brushes just aren't cutting it for me these days. Also, welcome everyone who just joined. Um, M3's here. Marco's here. Uh, Zella just joined. Welcome, guys. Six, six, six. HD says, "Love the big guy. The cattle looks kind of sweet. The overall concept is amazing." Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was great. It was awesome to come up with it in in a draw or in an hour. Um, and it just goes to show, even when you have an hour, if you want to, you can really spend the time and go through these ideas. Right? I think the first ten minutes of the hour I spent just writing down ideas. Um, but everyone did such a great job uh, on that challenge. It was really fantastic. I can, I can show a few because I love, I love showing off how, uh, how creative and like wonderful the, uh, the patrons are in the Discord. They're just fantastic. Which uh, it's like popping off. There's there's a ton of folks in here now, which is great. It's a really really supportive community. Anyone who wants to join the Discord community, it's three dollars on Patreon on Patreon a month, and you can hop in and do all the character design challenges. We support each other. Um, the way I think about it is like, you know, buying a coffee at a cafe and you sketch in the cafe. It's like, you know, <laughs> come into the space with an intention and participate. This was a great drawing from Mego, Nimble Cattle, just exactly as it sounds. It's doing a little pronk. You can see it's like punk, pronk, maybe doing a double jump here indication, which is fantastic. I love the double ear motif here, creating this cool second shape. 
there was an opportunity maybe to do it with the antlers or maybe with this creature's ears who knows that would have been a motif which we'll talk about very soon um carbon did a great drawing of the tortoise and the hare uh a you just killed it as usual this is a great drawing a hermes-esque design of like a, a herder with uh, godlike powers um calvin did this great drawing of this uh very clever um prospector using a a cattle to break through a rock it would seem um there's my little drawing there and benji did this great painting i love everything benji does it's so great also welcome grim um yeah marco did this really fun drawing of this uh tight walking cattle uh manipold i love this drawing so much you know mess with me you get the horns this nimble cattle cowboy skater with the horns on the skateboard like come on it's awesome um yeah jake did this great <laughs> creature character design um nabs had a ton of fun uh with this one tj's mutant ninja T cattle it's like this is great <laughs> and uh tazzy did this this great uh bovine shinobi motif which is fun very very beautiful bovine character it's great i see like a dark kind of uh cow print what i love to see is uh people kind of picking up on things they learn so like for instance uh i see like an ensemble here and we focused on that um in the last stream i did a bunch of ensemble stuff which i should change the thumbnail because it doesn't show at all what i actually do on the stream um but we did an ensemble challenge where uh there was just some absolutely fantastic entries um yeah, some really great pairings. Ayub again just killed it with the time banker, time eater. Um, my like little scientist explorers working together. But yeah, everyone did a approach the challenge of ensemble in a really unique way. Well, the car was a character for Mego's design and stuff. But yeah, I love like seeing people pick up on these things, like designing a group together and that kind of being a part of it and then bringing that into the next challenge. Like it's really cool to see. So I'm really impressed with everyone who's in the in the discord and the patreon you guys are awesome um oh yeah colin so sorry you missed the, this one it was a really fun one grim is here welcome grim game lords here kitano ken's here jake is here jake said oh i thought it was time bonker ah oh, that's that would be so good he bonks you with time but yeah so even in an hour-long challenge where you have no time to come up with an idea it's like write it down take yourself through it what feels right what's automatic like you know, you can go for the gamble drawing and just start sketching mindlessly and maybe you'll come up with something cool, but you'd be surprised what you can come up with when you really buckle down and kind of sort of reverse engineer from the prompt. Uh, but yeah, we've been doing a fun balance of like designing based on images, based on words, all that fun stuff, which is cool. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about motifs. So a motif, let's define motif, first of all, for everybody. Motif is, there's one definition, which is, a decorative pattern or design there is another one which is a distinctive feature or dominant idea in an artistic or literary composition uh, and in music it's a short succession of notes producing a single impression I don't, I don't really know what that means but all the music people can get out of here you can all leave it's allowed so <laughs> um yeah also today's stream is going to be a little bit i think a little bit shorter uh i do have to run i started later than expected i had a you know a, an event that happened today but i think also we're gonna chuck maybe we're gonna chuck this one up on uh on the instant gram for fun like why not right why not i haven't posted on uh my instagram story that i'm live in like a long time which is cool like i just love the youtube folks you guys are sick you guys are really great i'm just infinitely impressed with how wholesome this community is it's really great so yeah i'll check this on and then we'll we'll talk about motifs hmm. sweet Yeah, so, okay, a motif. We just discussed it. It's like a design thing, right? So what does that mean here? Well, in this design where we have this kind of kite unfolding paper sort of thing, that paper is like a pretty pretty significant, uh, or a cloth. I guess it could be cloth too, but in my mind it's paper. Um, 
this kind of uh, material choice and all that stuff um, being mirrored in the design I did here for this kid, which I love. I love him. He's he's adorable. He's my uh, he's my sweet baby boy. Um, yeah, this quick sketch was done with my just like regular sketch brush, my fun sketch brush, and then the line art I did with this new kind of pencil-y brush that I've been I've been developing over the past couple days. Um, this is the cleaner kind of fun sketch one, and this one's the more kind of scraggly one. I find different brushes help me think in different ways. Um, and anyone can make a brush, like you guys can make brushes. It's actually not that crazy. If you want my brush set, there's a beta version of it in the Patreon, in the Patreon Discord. So if you join that, you can get my beta brush set of brushes that I, that I use and that I've made. Um, but no pressure, zero pressure. But yeah, let's think about this. So yeah, so we have this paper design motif here, right? Um, and that is a great place to jump off and start concepting from once you know your motif. So returning viewers of the stream will know a couple of my other projects, one of them being Fish World, which someone asked at the beginning if this was in Fish World, and it definitely could be. I don't think it is, but it could be. It's not as grim as Fish World kind of needs to be, but that's actually, you know, a potential fallacy. It could totally be up in the same universe as Fish World if I really wanted it to be. But this one felt a little more, maybe there's magic in this world. I don't know, you know? A little more fantasy, a little more, a little more upbeat, joyful. I just like fish, I guess. I am from Bermuda, so <laughs> so there you go. But yeah, so sketching this guy out, and then I just dropped some colors on it for fun. Like I don't think it was anything like super specific. I think I'll probably recolor it. Um, I like the kind of jade and red combo. It's pretty fantastic, but definitely puts you in a bit of a corner when you try to go to like light and stuff like that. But you know, we'll see. We you shall see. Yeah, the lighting here was super aggro, but I was experimenting a lot, which was fun. It's fun to experiment. But yeah, so we can start to think about like now that we have two ideas, this one less resolved than this one, but we have two ideas, both involving these kind of like flowing, long, kind of like red paper-esque, or not red, but like these kind of paper sort of lantern-y or flag-esque kind of things like what else could possibly exist in this world? The answer is actually a whole lot, like a lot could exist in this world, which we'll come up with some ideas today after I take a little sip of my coffee. And after I actually hit post, I always forget to hit post. Awkward. But yeah, this is an interactive stream as well. So anyone in the chat is totally free to ask questions. Also welcome Hunter. Um, I've noticed the last couple streams, it's been a little harder for me to... Um, respond to every message in the chat because of there's just more of you guys now there's just more of you and uh <laughs> which is awesome you guys are great but it is hard to have like a 100 percent cohesive communication like every single time but but yeah um i'll do my best i'll definitely do my best that's for sure so yeah, we have this little runner guy and we can kind of think like, okay, what is he running to? What is he running from? He's happy. He's pretty proud in his job. He's optimistic. So I think maybe he's been waiting for his opportunity and he's finally has his opportunity. Like that's the feeling I get from him, which I love. I love that feeling. I love that I'm getting that vibe from him. That's awesome. Yeah, let's go in here and let's maybe tone down a few of the shadows and highlights and stuff i think i went a little overboard here especially working on white when you work on white recipe for disaster man yeah let's see if we can't start a little fresh with some of these colors maybe but this is kind of a little a little bit less important actually we grow stronger <laughs> Katen says hello gabriel hope you're doing well hey thanks man i really appreciate that but yeah let's let's stick this guy over here see what's going on i don't know why he's like low opacity what did i do what did i do 
Who am I? Oh, here it is. Boop. Yeah, so the red is a little little dark, a little intense. It's a little bit intense. To be fair, I was working on it last night with weird lighting, so that's my that's my defense. So you're just gonna have to accept that this time. Thinking it can be a little lighter. Oh yeah. Instantly elevates the design like a ton. A ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. And we'll definitely like fix the lighting and do all that fun stuff in the future. There's always going to be some stragglers we'll have to edit and whatnot, which is fine. We made it pretty easy to edit with some layer separations and stuff for the colors. Sometimes I do that, like if I feel like I need to, you know, make sure everything's like smooth and, and good and nice and all that fun stuff. But yeah, there we go. We've kind of brightened it up a bit. So we're going to use that as our base because it's much more vibrant. Oh, I should have just done that. Why did I make it darker? Well, that's okay. Red, red carp. Exactly, Zella. Exactly. Grim says, give that easy line of action. Oh, yeah, baby. So, yeah, if we're talking about line of action, like, this is just, yeah, textbook, man. Textbook. So, in terms of, like, shape design and posing and all that stuff. Shape design isn't just the shapes of the character you draw. It's the shapes they make when they move. It's also many other things. You should never get stuck in the fallacy of thinking that one thing or one title encapsulates just one thing. Shape design is many, many things. Okay, we're going to move this whole thing back, I think. There's another thing that I got to do here, which is that I'm working on like a like an insane file. Let's look at how many layers I have here. 500 layers on this one file. Like, that's too much, man. What am I doing? 900 pixels by three? This is insane. Game Lord says, Gabriel, I bought a spot in your course last week. Awesome, but I still haven't received the preparation email or Discord invite. Is it normal that it takes so long? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, dude, I will fix that immediately. I got you. Yeah, preparation materials are, they're designed to go about around two weeks out from the course. So, but I'll get you the Discord invite immediately. I got you. Colin says, do you have a method of finding a character's color palette? I feel like that's something I kind of struggle with. Ye yes, I do have strategies for it. But first, I'm just going to add Game Lord that I've got it. Oh, so that's a great... Yeah, so the preparation materials are coming soon for the... Oh, yeah, for those of you who are asking um, or who are wondering, the... Gosh, I don't, I don't want to talk about this every stream or spam it every stream, but we'll take a quick detour. It's not a quick detour. But... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, a bit disjointed. But yeah, so boom, baby. The character design course, there's only four spots left. Um, so yeah, we're getting closer to, to November now. So um, as we near the end of October into November, like uh, those last spots, who knows? Um, I'm doing some scheduling stuff, so I might be able to add a spot or two. It really depends uh, on how things go. But for now, it's limited to 10 spots. And yeah. Um, Six are gone, so four left. Um, but yeah, if you want to go through a character design mentorship with me where I take you through a ton of fundamental concepts for character design, um, talking about props, talking about motivations, shape design, all that stuff, everything. Basically, you're going to understand every implication of every choice you make when designing a character uh, and go through all of these fantastically fun exercises and stuff, then definitely check out the Gumroad link. It's in the description of this video. Um, and yeah, you can get a spot if you want. There's still four left. So yeah. But yeah, so when you get the course, it'll basically say like you've got your spot. You'll receive a note 
um, to get your preparation materials, which is essentially a collection of, of like, you know, videos that I think are really good um, exercises to kind of set goals, but it should be closer to the start than right now, but, but it'll go out very soon. So thank you everybody for the, for your patience and stuff on that. Um, but yeah, really exciting stuff. Real exciting. But yeah, I got you, buddy. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited too, Game Lord. It's gonna be a really fun course. I'm teaching everything I wish I had when I started this, so it's it's great. Marcus says it's so fun that I'm about to color a character, and I just heard the question, so I patiently wait for the strategies. <laughs> And she says, your PC must be a beast if it's running that large of a file open while streaming. So, <laughs> oh, Manipold says, I love how someone rated it already. Yeah, right? <laughs> it hasn't started and someone rated it. Um, that's so funny. An accident, but oh, well. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I hope you won't have to amend your, the five-star rating. Um, so... So yeah, so let's talk about color palette here. Well, oh gosh, are we going to talk about color? We've talked about color design so much. Not actually, we've done it only twice, and it was on a dragon, so this is relevant. So okay, color palette for a character. I think that each color can be so many different things in context. So if you know what you want your character to be or to do, then the choices are much easier for you color-wise if you also know what colors do, right? So with this character in particular, to use as a basically like a base or, or, a, or an example, um, this bright red is like punchy. It's celebratory. It's uh, visible. It's boisterous. It's all that stuff. So I want this character to be a focal point, center of attention, all that good stuff. That is part of this character. That's why you would choose a color like red in this way. Um, also that it's festive and this and that. Blah, 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 blah. Um, the complementary color that I chose was a kind of jade blue, jade green. And the what that's going to do for this character is add a kind of almost royalty like this character is not random this is this is a an, an important uniform that this character is wearing it's important it's for a reason they're not standalone they exist within a broader world with broader forces like those are implications right um and then on top of that um the character kind of skin tone was just sort of complimentary was working in the value range and i don't know it's good to have characters with varying skin tones <laughs> diversity which is sick. Mojo says, frick, I missed the notification. It's okay. We only started recently. But I will be going for, I think, 40-ish more minutes. Yeah, around 40-ish 40, 40 more minutes. So hype. so hype so yeah color palette but if you're if you're thinking like i don't know what to do with my character with the colors with whatever um again ask yourself what does this character want to be because if you're putting all the pressure on yourself to create everything with all of your reasons and all your opinions and all that stuff it's like you're leaving no room for your subconscious to do any work you're leaving no room for even just like the broader structure of the of like the truth of story to come into play as well. Um, so let's use an example. Let's think about an example. I mean, this was a pretty good example in terms of like the festivity and all that stuff. Worked with the expression and everything. Everything is in unity here, if that makes sense. Um, another option, if we were to completely recolor this character, that could be a fun exercise. But no, we're talking about motifs today. But color palettes for character, definitely check your, when you're coloring a character with a color palette, check your values often. Check your values often. If there's no separation of values, um, if everything is the same gray or the same white or same whatever, your character is going to look super washed out. Like you need to have that variation so that the eye has like places of rest, separations, all that stuff. The same is with hue as well though, with like contrasting hues and everything. But that's a whole other thing. But yeah. Um, 
uh, AOLMQ says, sorry to ask if this has already been talked about, but will the course or other courses be available again in the future? Yeah, I think based on the interest on this one alone, um, especially being the first time I'm running it, like is very strong. I suspect I will be teaching this same course uh, next fall. So on the next schedule. Yeah, next fall, probably. Um, I think I'm going to be working to make more self-study materials in the interim. So like little little things here and there. So like instead of doing, you know, the, the whole the whole like seven weeks in succession with one-on-ones with me, you'll get a video lecture, an assignment, and uh, I'll probably have some example uh, feedback so that people can still learn from that, I think. We'll see. Hunter said, is Kid with the Sword and Friends project on hold? Or are you scrapping it? Nah, I never scrap every anything, man. Um, scrapping things, no, no reason to. That that story, I love that story. It's awesome. Yo, welcome, Ayub. Welcome. Wild CQRD said, what helped you the most with shape design in your sketches? How did you learn it? I really like the way you use shapes, and I notice a lot of pros doing it, but not many resources for how to learn it. Shape is really hard to teach. Shape is really hard to teach, and I think that when people try to teach it in its totality, they fail uh, because... Again, shape is so much more than people realize. Uh, and when you see something appealing and you're like, ooh, I like the shapes, it's hard. Speaking of shapes, new cynics video. Oh, sick. Is there actually? But yeah, it's, it's hard to nail down a definitive thing. Oh, improving art through meditation based dude cynic is cynic is awesome i love that guy and she says i imagine that this character has the has an important role looks like it in this world there are for sure some other people who are after him or rather after what he delivers does he have project protection or abilities it's a great question who knows who knows mojo said i came here instead Pfft, as you should as you should always ditch cynics for me that's the rule that's the rule. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Dude, Cynix is awesome. He's a really nice guy, really humble guy. Uh, but yeah, okay. So let's get sketching here. Let's do some sketches here. Let's duplicate this out and maybe we'll flatten this one. We'll merge it. So I have like just a separate version. Okay, now we need we need a new file because this file is too big. So we're gonna make a file. We're gonna do a three horizontal. We'll call it paper trail. Project working project title paper trail. Boom baby, there you go. We're gonna copy this guy. And we're going to copy this guy. Pew. Streamer wars. <laughs> no, hell no. Uh, did I ever participate in Chroma Core? Ugh, never had the time, man. Never had the time. It's just... It's. I feel like it's not worth it unless you're in high school. chroma core but then you'll just kind of like lose to like a pro <laughs> but chroma core actually that's a that's too quick of a generalization i think chroma core when it first came out it was so hype everyone was so hype i didn't have oh man i think i was still working at a fine dining restaurant when chroma core one was out so didn't quite have the time but wait we're talking about shape design here well i'll talk about shape design while i talk about motifs right so let's see Let's see here. We're gonna use my new brush that I've been developing. Jill Braille pencil brush. Boom, boom, boom. I like it, it's toothy, right? It's kind of nice. I like it, I like it a lot. So we haven't warmed up today drawing. I kind of just went straight in. 
I always spend like half an hour making the thumbnail and then like uh <laughs> I really need a system, man. <laughs> uh Yeah, exactly, Mojo. It's the going that hard part, man. I feel like Chroma Core is really good for people who like doing their homework instead of doodling other things rather than their homework, which is me. Why finish my homework when I can start a new IP? Hmm? Huh? Streamer war sounds kind of fun. I was talking who I was talking about with some buddies and I was like, oh man, guys, I have over a thousand subscribers now. Like, what beef should I start? Like <laughs> I was just joking around, like, what beef should I start, guys? Now that I have a one thousand subscribers, who do I call out? Who do I who do I create a fake beef with? I thought it'd be funny to like go after Marco Bucci, who's the nicest man on earth. Uh and it's doubly funny because uh, I know him, and I was the first person to ever recognize him, like, in the wild. That's my claim. That's my claim to the Marco Bucci legacy. But I thought it'd be so funny to, like, fake beef with Mar Marco Bucci. <laughs> yeah. But he's so nice. I told him last year, I was like, I'm going to start YouTube. And he was like, yeah, you should. I was like, let's go. So this year at Lightbox, in a couple weeks, I'll be able to tell him, hey, man, started YouTube it's going well this and that let's go that'll feel really good i think he's so nice he's so nice and he's so down to earth he's like so he's like so he's such a good guy so humble and like such a he's so service oriented which i love also welcome emmy let's go let's go So I'm just doing some like random sketches right now. Kind of comfort zone -y weird sketches. For fun. Which I don't really have time to warm up on the stream. So, all right. We're talking about mode. I always do that. I always place that eye too far on that side. Every time. Every time. Lasso tool is my, is my crutch. So, all right, let's talk about shape design and motifs. So we have this paper motif, right? Well, also, you know, again, for those of you who are longtime viewers, you'll know that like fish world, fish is the motif of that world. Like that is it. It's like, it's just fish. And that's fine. Fish is fine. It's allowed. So, okay, we're talking about a world where there are kites, like big kites all around and maybe there's like a constant wind or something maybe that's like a rule of the world that the wind never stops that's kind of cool if the wind never stops hmm. kite world yeah exactly kite world <laughs> gosh just add world he said the thing <laughs> you guys are funny friendship ended with the eraser lasso tools my new best friend that's funny emmy that's a deep cut for those of you who get that colin says teach a man to fish and he'll create fish world tazu says omg what happens if it stopped well exactly what would happen if it stopped what happens when the wind stops blowing <gasps> scandal it's giving nausicaa so kites well, we had a kid who's like running, having a good old fashioned time running around with his cool kite. I'm thinking, what about if, gosh, what about how would kites help people? Well, you have things high in the air, maybe. But why does that matter? <gasps> Yo, wait, 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 wait. What if there was like a like a cliff face? What if there's like a cliff face 
and or something and like there are these houses or like the homes are like off the edge and these homes in the distance like in the far distance have like these giant kites attached to like their home and it's like keeping them up like off the edge of this like world or something right like what if that was that would be so cool what 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 little rope ladders and stuff and they go to the end there's like a little little hole and like little spiral staircases around and all that stuff so cool yo that's so sick and it's like this is like huge in the distance like gigantic like gi gigamorphous gigantosaurus guys Tazu says, why can't they live on land? Well, exactly. Why can't they live on land? So what we're doing right now is we're kind of like setting parameters. What we've included, or not setting parameters, but we're giving ourselves limitations. We're giving ourselves reasons to solve, problems to solve, right? Um, so let's say we have Kite World, or we have these like these like giant kite, huge. They're like really sick designs too, like big, big, giant kite designs, beautiful patterns, and like incredible all this stuff attached and they've got these little tassels flying in the wind and they're just beautiful. Like I can see it in my mind as I'm drawing it. I can see it in my mind. I'm not drawing what is in my mind, but I'm making visual notes to myself right now of what I need to return back to pretty much. Maybe it's like a defense mechanism. So maybe, maybe, ooh, yeah, maybe, oh, wait, 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 okay, 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 I got it, 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 check this out, check this out, okay, okay, are you ready, are you ready, this is so sick, so house, it's right now, boom, it's tethered in between, in between, whoa, it's tethered in between, who would have thought, not me, not me, but it's got to be gyroscopic, because or not gyroscopic but it's got it yeah it has to be gyroscopic because otherwise it would just kind of fling all over the place so the clinching material or the whatever material here no matter at what angle this is at if this is like turned all the way that way or, or turned all the way this way or whatever that the center of gravity on this would keep it at the bottom so it spins on a couple of axes so that things don't go crazy inside so that's a solution boom done so now we have gyroscopic technology we have giant kites and maybe it's like a little rope ladder or something but you know ask the question why can't they live on land well that's because silly silly billy and this giant crank that pulls them back it goes kark, 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 and it like perches back there because there are probably like a like big old big big creatures or whatever no that's bad what is it why can't they why can't they be on land why would they want to ascend why would they want to ascend? Hmm. Polar Express. <gasps> Why would they want to go into the air? Because of... If it's a creature, I feel like it would be smart enough to pull it back because the floor is lava. That's funny. Evil worms. <laughs> Maybe. Um, that can't live in the windy skies? Yeah, maybe. I was thinking of that. Like, what if there was, like, something that, like can't like or like up maybe like gusts of wind were so p strong or they would sweep over that they had to escape the whatever and go to a grass is poisonous i mean maybe the grass is poisonous moles i i like the idea of moles a lot of these ideas though is that like uh is that i feel like the moles would cut the rope anything that could cut the rope is kind of a no-go so it has to be something has to be something right and it can't climb across either it's afraid of heights maybe um hmm. wind shear yeah exactly like there's like a thing that happens but that could also just cut the rope right so why would they want to ascend higher hmm I 
<laughs> land sharks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe. Uh, maybe the actual terrain is not that flat, so they can't live there. Eh, true. I mean, that was my justification for pirate war sky pirates, which is, you know, a pretty weak justification, to be honest. Colin said, what if they're constantly traveling so they don't stay in one place long enough to rebuild houses? Oh, so, like, maybe it's an anchor and they travel around so it's like nomadic maybe maybe poisonous gas that stinks down sticks stinks down to the surface maybe i mean the poison gas thing it's not a bad idea but what is that story then the story is they live in a world with poison gas and i don't know that's not as interesting like i, I want a, a better personally i want like a strong reason on why this should happen so let's give it a minute because uh, all good things come to those who wait, but uh, not wait too long. So we'll return for sure. They could carry their houses. I love that. Yeah, that's interesting. There's the the traveler part isn't really really interesting to me. Maybe um, it's pretty aimless though, right? Like whatever wherever the wind blows. It's also how do they land? How do they how do they stay in the air? Is it literally just the kite pulls them? If so, I feel like there's a lot of potential danger maybe hunter says also seeing this like gang of rebels that roam the land almost like arcane's underworld i thought about raiders maybe raiders what would cityscapes look like well exactly what would cityscapes look like colin said they were really moved by the moving movie up and wanted to role play you're just a, you're just trolling me colin I don't, I don't know about that um Okay, let's, let's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop reading the chat for a minute and just kind of sketch around, see what kind of comes up for me personally, you know, you never know, you never know. But I do like this kite motif a lot. I'm also going to reduce the opacity of this by like a, by like a bunch, because when you reduce the opacity of something, it's giving the impression of, uh, atmospheric atmospheric perspective i think it's called where it seems bigger than it is as it fades away or it just it shows that it's bigger because it is bigger but yeah so let's say maybe it's like a little little hobbit hole kind of guy and this there's a little house and it has cool fun designs and this and that and it's got like a little system and it's almost like it's almost like following the design of a of a, of a seed pod blowing in the wind you know Shwee. So maybe they do travel, but why would they travel? Maybe, ooh, okay, wait. I like the idea that maybe, just maybe, I also like the idea of like cascading kites. Like they release one and it like flies into the air and it pulls the next one, which pulls the next one. So it's like a series of larger kites that set each other off. Like I like that. That's cool. But if they, tr maybe it's their defense mechanism. When they know it's time to leave, it's not so much an anchor, but it's like a last resort. Like they fly away. And they go off. Wah, into the distance. Goodbye. Well, obviously they would be able to do that, if, even if it was this design. Whoa. A uh, plague could be cool. Take our structures, push it somewhere, put it somewhere else. <laughs> Uh, gas plague pops up randomly. Kite world, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Giant worm. Fake gas plague. Yeah, maybe. There's no way to navigate, travel around. Hmm. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, traveling entertainers. Okay, so maybe the capacity to travel is definitely there, but I do like the idea that maybe they could launch up as like a little defense. Like there could be a little let's say. Let's let's keep drawing and see how far we get. I think we need some some primary drawing research here. So let's say we have like a little ridge, right? It's got a little winding path and like, oh, going up to the to the thing, you know, and here we are and have maybe a traveler or whatever with his little backpack and he's walking along. Who knows? Uh, but up this ridge, up the tiny ridge, at the top, 
because they always go at the top of ridges. That's like kind of the rule, right? Uh, there are these little pod clusters. I like the, I was thinking maybe they go up and do the sky equivalent of fishing. You know what I mean? Like they have like a sky version of fishing. Like that's cool. Um, but why would a house need to be up there? I feel like a guy could just go up there, but this is a cool idea. Like, because then in theory, right? Like these different kind of, uh, homes or whatever could in an emergency, just kind of be like like all in the sky but why would they do that they would go up because then because then they have an advantage because they are an archery clan guys we did it <laughs> we came up with a cheap solution but it's a cheap solution that i like so it's allowed they are an archery clan they will stand on their porch with their big old bows and anybody who gets too close they go but they can't be the victim of a cavalry charge oh wait sick okay so there's people who travel on horseback now we just invented another thing this is so cool so we have you know, guy traveling on horseback. Now, you guys are about to watch me draw a horse. Okay, hang on. We need a minute here. You guys are about to watch me draw a horse. I don't know horse anatomy. I don't, I don't know the first thing about it. So, when I draw a horse, you can't get mad at me or say that I'm bad. Deal? Deal? That's the deal absolute deal broco kangaroo moment no oh my god no dude i think everyone's i think everyone was kind of like damn does stan really know anatomy like stan knows all the anatomy dude he's really good but then at that moment everyone was like am i gonna take this guy's go i don't know so so here we go. But let's say, have a guy. Let's do a. Let's do this. I feel like this is this is. This is correct, maybe. <laughs> this is definitely not correct. I feel like this is correct enough. He's on a horse. This is probably a horse, right? They do the little thing with their leg or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> the proportions are so off. <laughs> this is great. No reference, horse from imagination. But yeah, let's say you got an evil guy. He's got a big evil cloak and he's gonna he's gonna get him. Oh, wait, I'll, oh, wait, okay, okay, wait, wait, time check, time check, guys, time check. <laughs> My girlfriend just texted me. I'm going to have dinner with her very soon. I'm very excited. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Classic, classic. Um, okay, okay, yeah, so a little time check, a little time check. So we got a little hor evil horse guy. Evil horse guy is going, <laughs> the evil horse, they have manes, right, probably. This is definitely wrong. But this is fine. This actually isn't, uh, I don't know, is it that bad? Let's see. Horses look different in Kite World, evil horse. Yeah, 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 horses for sure, for sure. How often are you gonna draw horses? Notice how no nothing in my IPs have horses in them ever. 
All I know is horses got that cake, dude. They're caked up. They're caked up. They're about it. It's happening. We figured it out. This is enough. Enough. Enough to imply horse. But yeah, evil horse. This horse is evil. Don't be fooled. Yeah, evil horse. They're, they're approaching the city because they're going to be like, we're going to go defeat you. Okay. Guy. <laughs> Not the evil horse cake. <laughs> evil horse. I'm going to do some studying. Oh my gosh, yeah. I definitely need to do some horse studies for sure. I mean, horses are beautiful creatures, man. Definitely beautiful. I feel like I did a pretty decent job here. The only thing is that's too far that way. <laughs> yeah, so maybe I'll pull up reference next time. But unlikely. Hey, listen, a horse in on a little plane here in perspective, not that bad. Maybe. It's pretty bad. I don't know how horses look. Okay, so. Let's see here. Yeah, so so they'll shoot up and uh, they'll they'll go up into the air and then when they charge them, even if they cut the lines, they'll just be like escaping. They'll they'll just escape, right? So it's like a fool's errand to go after him. These like raider guys. We give him horns cuz he's evil. He's Loki. <laughs> The kangaroo sowed the seeds of doubt. Yeah, a little bit. Uh. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, the Proko kangaroo. Dude, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Like, it's really good. But drawing from imagination is not Stan's thing. That's not his thing. He's a academic, atelier-trained illustrator, fine artist from reference like that's his that's his vibe he accentuates from imagination from his own internal knowledge but that's not what he sets out to do every day for his job you know man i said they would have to be very gullible not to invent anything bow like especially seeing them on the kite seeing them on the kite people very gullible not to invent anything bow like the horse people i mean even if they shoot up at them like, this is, like, a little sturdy house. Like, it doesn't make a difference. Plus, if they're, the the kites are so far in the air, they can't they can't hit it. They go, oh, they go, oh, I missed. Oh, I missed. Not powerful enough, unfortunately, for these epic kites. And if they plug arrows into the house, the houses are protected, man. They're made, oh, the houses are made from actual seed pods, from, like, giant trees, maybe. Whoa, there are giant trees in the world? Guys, we're having a lot of fun today, clearly. But then what do these guys do? If these guys are also kind of paper kite motif, what's their vibe? What do they have? What's their what's their deal? I don't know. I don't know, man. I feel like maybe they have this like a an insane amount of like banners. I don't know if you guys have played Banner Saga. It's one of my favorite games ever. But let's say they're approaching the edge and they're on their little horses and they have their little This looks like a dog. That's fine, that's allowed. They have all their dudes and they're all approaching up and they're going up the hill and Maybe they all have these like giant like right like scary intimidation tactics this guy's just over here destroying my piece Let's see how far we are. How much time do we have? We've got... All right. I've got roughly 10-ish minutes. Horse kite. <laughs> oh, man. Let's go. Let's go. Man, it said... Uh, Tazu says... It's so windy, firing arrows wouldn't work. Ooh, definitely not up. Because the wind gets stronger as it goes up, right? So they would... The higher they are, the better chance they have. But their arrows are super powerful, and they go like, because they're bigger people. Maybe, maybe they're like a ethnically taller people with with archer bods. Have you guys ever seen one of those like ripped guys pulling back a bow? It's so cool. It makes me want to get like yoked and pull back a bow. To be honest. 
All right, we're kind of troll today, guys. A little bit, a little bit. We're a little bit kind of messing around. We're being we're being funny today, a little bit. It's allowed. All right, all right. So we've kind of got this paper motif. So then let's run it back. Running kid, what's he running to? What's he running from? Maybe he's running in between these different cultures or different kingdoms or different little towns or whatever. I don't know. Right? Jake says maybe they would make kites out of the tough skin of the guys they were hurt. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Horse kite. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's that's really funny, Zola. <laughs> They're really into industry and giant plant deforestation. It's true. Zola says they're there is a guy that can shoot a bow hanging upside down on a pole on YouTube. Oh yeah, that guy. I love that guy. The beacon of Gondor. Kind of. Maybe that's what it is. I like to think of it like it's a festival or something, right? But maybe there are like these different kind of peaceful people who are like one with nature, attuned with nature. And maybe there's like much more industrial, intense, and antagonistic force that is not as in tune with nature and people. You know, like maybe a... Uh, Maybe they're like little meanie bobinis or something, right? Mm, would they like conflict and like hit each other when they were flying? Probably, wouldn't they? Hmm. Hmm. Nah, it's fine. It's a fantasy world. It's fine. They would never hit each other while flying. Yeah, like these big beautiful kite designs they wouldn't be so cuddled together though i don't think they would have some space to have their own vibe probably most likely maybe but yeah that's kind of maybe the idea behind these guys is that they're they're like a noble peaceful nomadic whatever and they would like cut the tether and they'd go wee <laughs> wee they'd fly away if they had to but they would defend their little land if they you know they'd defend their their area um, probably. So we're in the sky a lot. There's kites a lot. So what I'm thinking is like, what if they have a version of, and keep in mind right now we're designing with a motif of kites. That's what we're doing. So let's say there's a bird, a pretty like, like fat bird. Sorry. Uh, impact. No, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Uh, a nutritious bird with a lot of uh, a lot of meat plump yeah plump is the word we're looking for looking like that one pokemon can't remember what it's called you know the one already love the burb if you don't love the burb I don't know what to tell you but let's say there's a bird right big old plump bird yum soft down bird let's say there's this bird and the bird when you look at it maybe has like a certain like feather pattern, right? And the feather pattern was a uh, something pretty distinct maybe. Maybe it had like big circles going all around or something kind of fun, right? Let's say like it's a fun design, maybe. Possibly, quite possibly a fun design. If we're lucky, it's a fun design. And it goes back in and maybe around the center, it turns like a different color or something. But in any case, there's a distinct thing, right? Let's say these people, because they're smart, and this bird gets preyed on by, 
let's say let's copy this over let's say this bird this little birdie guy gets preyed on by like this creature wow wow squaw sorry i'm like methoding the bird into reality right now which is the best way to do it if you want to if you want your drawing to be good, make lots of sounds. Gets captured by this bird. Which is just unbelievably massive. Like big. If we were to compare this to a person, a person would be like would be like this big. This is our guy. This is our this is our sad man who has to deal with this bird. He's going, what do I do with this bird? I don't know. I don't know what to do with the bird. My tummy hurts. Question mark. That's the size that we're going for, right? So giant bird predator out of nowhere from the top, from above. Comes out of nowhere, scr scrunches up this guy. So this is like foreground feathers you know from like a wing that comes over like that or something you know and we're just scribbling this out let's say some for some reason i don't know what this bird i don't know why they would want this bird but let's say they wanted to like catch this giant bird for some reason i don't know why they'd want to do it but let's just say for the sake of argument they wanted to catch this bird then what they would do is they would make a decoy bird. Or maybe this is how they like just decoy it away, right? And they build it and it's shaped like this and it has the same pattern, right? But it's a, it's a, it's a kite. So they actually make a kite that for some reason distracts this big bird or lures this big bird into giving itself away allowing them to maybe lash one of the feet and like take it down or something yeah maybe they want the feathers maybe they want whatever for materials let's just say these birds are mean and they're like they're upsetting and they like you know do evil stuff and maybe i don't know it's okay to get rid of animals and hunt animals if they like do something bad to like i don't know like a kid like maybe they live like they like snatch the kids or something of the village that's a great way to justify and get the audience on your side for getting rid of the bird. <laughs> it's like definitely uh, an easy hack, which is pretty dark. But yeah, so so let's say they make this kite, right? And it's an actual like, you know, almost one-to-one, -one, but not actually. Took a puppy. Yeah, it took a puppy. Exactly. Then they had to John Wick the bird. And maybe this has some kind of trap inside. So when it snatches it, it like maybe springs a, a trap on the bottom. Something like kind of goes like, -ching, -ching, you know, maybe it's like a, t a tension thing. And once the tension breaks, it snaps over. Like, you know, those straight, um, those like straight things and you snap them onto your wrist. Like one of those, like, let's say maybe there's like one of those along the, front or the back or whatever and when it grabs it it goes like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. grabs the bird or something and captures it and then they, ha they have it on a line or maybe they want it on a line because it'll lead them back to its nest maybe it'll lead them back to whatever i don't know we'll see um wait let's see let's see let's keep keep up with chat what chat is saying I already love the bird. Let's go. Ostrich bird. What up, Coes? Welcome. A plump burby. Heck yeah. You guys are great. All thinking the same thoughts. Colin says the bird stole the family pet and now they're all John Wick or Jinx. True. 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 But yeah, so that's like a cool kite idea, right? Maybe they use the kites for hunting birds of prey or something you know uh or vice versa maybe they hunt smaller birds with smaller kite birds or something and 
and uh, that's kind of the design or whatever. Like there's there's some cool stuff we can do here for sure. Let's check. Love the bird that looks like a fan. Oh. Alrighty, let's let's go through. So let's take stock of what we have here. But we also have from our original design people who still dwell on land and deal with land creatures. And I feel like kites or something has to play some kind of role in that. Well, we have a giant red snake. So there, the land is obviously kind of dangerous because it has giant red snakes. So there's that. Um, but yeah, if we kind of take a look through what we designed today, we started with this idea. Paper unfolding motif. Then we kind of had like a runner kid who's part of some kind of ceremony. This is definitely the most finished, obviously, of the several ideas. Part of some kind of maybe ceremony, festival, who knows. And then we have these potential baddies, chaotic baddies, who are going up the mountain to try to get the seed pod people who are noble or nomadic archers. I think that's I think that's right. And then they're on a mountain or they have a mountain or something. And then what? Then we have birds and they use kites to capture birds. <laughs> the decoy the bird let's let's do let's do decoy decoy slash bait decoy slash bait hmm decoy slash yeah slash bait is fine <laughs> oh man so let's go through this all right anything we want to come up with while we're still in the design brain um let's think about this maybe so then what do the the archer guys look like if we have a kid here i feel like the archers have to be like super cool maybe the archer people almost like are like kind of after sort of take after birds themselves you know what i mean like maybe they have like these long maybe like capes or something that can unfold out into like big kites they themselves become the kite be the kite you wish to see in the world um what do they want from the kite people they want conquest Colin says, wait, what if the giant bird feeds on the red snakes and the boy is also a decoy? Ooh, that's interesting. Maybe he is calling the bird. The bird is flying behind him and he's running away from the bird. But it's like some kind of festival. That seems dark, but possible. That's a good idea, Colin. But it's, but it's interesting. There's something there for sure. Um, definitely something there. Like the bird flies over or something. Or maybe he runs and when the bird gets low enough, everybody shoots at the bird. So he actually is the decoy. That way they can like get the bird or something. I don't know. He's it, It's like some kind of thing. Or... Or maybe the run he has to do is like through a pass or like through an area where there's dangerous creatures and they're afraid of the red creature that he is pretending to be. Maybe. I don't know. Tazu says, what if those birds are really hard to capture and the horse kite people want them because they know how to capture because their feathers or talons are valuable? That's true. It's also possible that they domesticate them. And if they domesticate one of those birds, how cool is that? Like imagine like a giant, like a giant bird, like giant feathers, huge bird, like giant beak and talons and everything, like the big scary bird. Has like a rider, like a little rider and the rider's like, Oh there, stop, stop right there. This is our giant bird. I'm gonna mess you up, buddy. Or something, right? 
That's kind of cool. They capture it because they want to domesticate it. That's like the coolest option, right? How does that still stay in kite though? How to train your kite? No, <gasps> no. Yeah, what if the horse people want the bird? Like they want to get the birds or something. I like the idea that the horse people are maybe like war raiders or something and and it's just kind of like they pass through and when they pass through all the kite people go up into the air and it's just kind of an everyday thing like oh horse people are passing through time to go up and they go up and the horse people pass through and they're like eh, okay like i like the idea that maybe there's like a standoff like that no one actually does anything how to train your chicken um he's just a big little guy it's so true colin so true also dark renaissance is here welcome The evil horse cake. <laughs> Ooh. I like the idea that maybe there are these creatures and these people are using these like kites and colors and paper to guide the behavior of these creatures based on other creatures. Like, for instance, if these giant birds had um, these like big like a hunger for these red snakes or they wanted to eat the red snakes or something, there could be a cool idea where someone who had a bow right at the end of the arrow, there was another like long, like red ribbon attached. And when it fired, when it stuck into something, like let's say the horse people have like really thick armor, maybe it doesn't even get through, but it pegs them with like, with this like thing that's actually a kite that's flying and the bird comes down and snatches them up. Like, that's cool. Like, they almost, like, uh, like it's almost like marking an airstrike, maybe. Like, that's kind of sick. Karn says, just got here, and we have a giant bird, kite, and horse people. Amazing. <laughs> nice. Avatar, the way of kites. No. Well, it's just every story, right? Nature, including nature. But I do like that idea. So, okay, we have, we have fish hat kid who's running. We have the people who live on the seed pods that fly up into the air when there's danger. They fly up with their giant kites and there's ho there's bad horse people. We know there are bad horse people, but why are they bad? What are they doing? We don't know. Are they all bad? Maybe not. Who knows? However, horse people are, well, the horse people are at a disadvantage. Maybe they're at a disadvantage when they're on the offensive, but they can just run away because they're on horses. What do the horse, horse people need? I feel like they need something here. They want to... They want, you know what they want? They want to be friends. <laughs> All right. We're going to have to sign off pretty soon, guys. But this is a pretty good catalog of ideas. So we opened up talking about, you know, paper, different motifs. And from these kind of ideas that we have of creatures being guided by uh, impressions or symbols of other creatures based on behavior evolution, people being in harmony with that balance and using it to their advantage, uh, using that, you know, in terms of... Uh, symbolically or ritualistically or even this might have purpose or something um as well as then uh a relationship between predator and prey luring with prey uh you know scaring away with predator that kind of balance like these people are using nature to their advantage um because the nature of this world is extremely harsh so they kind of have to and uh they ride the big creatures too so they, there is some kind of unity though between the people and the these giant creatures too um so yeah i think we did a pretty great job here um i like the idea that maybe with these giant bison creatures that's too big for the eagles to hunt they're too big so they don't even bother but they like the snakes so the snakes eat the bison the bison are afraid of the snakes the snakes get eaten by the bird the bird is afraid of the bison because the bison do something to the bird they uh they spike them with their horn maybe they have like a horn yeah maybe they maybe they have like horns that go like shwink designed against the falcon creature so when they go it'll just it'll just spike him or get him it doesn't so they don't like him they don't like to hunt them cool circle of life baby it's true i think it's a pretty good design day uh we talked a little bit about designing with motifs we came up with some pretty quick examples no finished drawings it's hard to finish a drawing on stream um, I find myself doing a lot of ideas and scribbles, but you know, you guys got a horse from imagination from me. You got a horse. It's pretty, pretty decent. You know, it's not, it's not that wrong. It's only a little wrong. 
Uh, we got flag, flag, guy, flag horse people, which oh, I want to know what their deal is. Maybe we'll discuss horse people next stream. Maybe I'll go live tomorrow and we'll talk about horse people. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, this has been fantastic and really fun, guys. Um, uh, again, if anyone wants to join the Patreon, it's $3. You can join our Discord. Uh, it's only 3 bucks a month, and we do a lot of character design challenges, which is how this whole thing got kicked off with this one. Um, if you want to take my character design course, and it's a course, it's a mentorship course, so there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one times. Um, there's seven one-on-one -on -one sessions ac across the entire course, which is a lot. Uh, you can find that in the description. Um, yeah, all of the preparation materials and stuff is coming soon to everyone who has the course and Discord invites and all that stuff. Um, so yeah. Manipold said CDC better have a horse theme now for practice. <laughs> Can you imagine? We could do animal reference for fun. We could do animal reference uh, study days. I'm trying to find a way to do something every day for, for the people in the, the Discord, like have like a daily practice thing that anyone can join in on. It's just time zones and my own schedule. We'll see. Maybe we can make it happen. Who knows? But yeah, I love you guys. You guys are awesome. I really love these ideas. And uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for being here. Um, you guys are great. If you are watching this live, you're incredible and amazing. And uh, thank you so much. And if you're watching this back, thank you for coming to my channel. If you're a returning viewer, fantastic. If you're a new viewer, I hope you learned something today. Um, it's a lot of ideas, a lot of theory, uh, not a whole lot of like finished stuff. It's hard to do drawings like this on stream because it'll just be me silently doing line art for like two hours. <laughs> but uh I appreciate you guys hopping on for the streams and hearing my takes and stuff. I hope everybody learned something. Um, if you did learn something, definitely let me know in the comments what you learned. Um, I love to know what people's takeaways are and what I should continue focusing on. And uh, if you like this video, definitely like this video. Like the video and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And you guys are awesome. And uh, I, will, I, will, I will go live soon. Definitely Thursday for sure. So in two days. Um, but I might go live tomorrow. Just teasing you with that. Whenever I say that, I never do. But I might. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a fantastic day. And uh, see you on the next one. Peace out.